Let's continue to factor trinomials where the coefficient in front of the x squared term is not a 1. Now, while many people will use that guess and check process, um, you know, but still not a lot, 20 to 25 percent of folks are real good at their, their factoring times tables and, and they can just see where the values um, should go. This AC method works all the time, every time, if the trinomial is factorable. And so you can be guaranteed that the process will get you to the right answer. So let's go ahead and remember that we need to multiply together the A and the C values. So in this case, uh, the 3 times 4. So I want two numbers whose product is 12. And then I want those two numbers to add to be the middle coefficient, in this case, the 13. And while many of us can just see that 12 times 1 is 12, and 12 plus 1 adds to be 13, I just want to share with you my thought process when I find these listing of numbers. First of all, I want two numbers whose product is positive, and I want them to add to be a positive number. So I just deal with positive values. And in case I didn't notice that those were the two values, I go ahead and say, okay, 1 times the number always works, but does 2 go into 12? And it does. And then I say to myself, does 3 go into 12? And it does. And then I say to myself, does 4 go into 12? We already, we already have that pairing, and so I'm done. But if this number was larger, then I'd say, does 5 go into 12? And does 6 go into 12? And does 7 go into 12? So you might take your calculator and go, if it's a big number, say it's 68. You know, 68 divided by 7, 68 divided by 8, 68 divided by 9. But I know that 1 plus 12 is 13, and so that's the pairing of values that I'm going to come over here and replace 13x with. So I can, here's something else I need you to know. I can, either, I can write this as a 1x and a 12x, because that adds to be 13x. Or I can write this as a 12x and a 1x because that adds to be 13x. It will work either way, I promise. But this particular circumstance, it looks kind of nice for me to put the 12x in the back to go with this 4, and then to put this 3x squared in front, and I have my four terms now um, that I'm going to use. But again, could have used this the other way around. Now I'm going to group the first two terms and group the last two terms and take the greatest common factor out of this group, which is an x. And then I'm going to take the greatest common factor out of this group, which is a 4. And if these binomials, boy, I'm sorry, uh, take a 4 out and I need a 3x right here. I'm going to erase that so we can see that better. Errors. I was writing that. So 4 times 3x is this 12x, and 4 times 1 is that 4. And I'm looking for these to match, and if this is factorable, they will match. Again, I write that group down once, and then this x and this 4 go in the other set of parentheses. And I just want you to know that if you would just FOIL this out, here's the 3x squared, this outside right here is 12x. This is 1x. That's that 12 and the 1. They add to be 13x. And 1 times 4 right there is that 4. So we can check it. I'm just kind of running out of space, so I didn't want to uh, go ahead and take the time to write that down. Let's do another one. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to not have... Um, constantly have plus signs in my trinomial. So the problem I'd like to do is 5y squared minus 16y plus 3. And so my a value times my c value is a positive 15. Um, please make sure that you go ahead and Think very clearly, careful, even maybe write down that that's a positive 15. And I want the two numbers that I find to add up to sum to be a negative 16. So first of all, again, I'm going to kind of play the devil's advocate. If I want the two numbers to multiply to be a positive 15, they either have to have positive signs, both of them, or they both have to be negative signs, because a negative times a negative is a positive. I want these numbers to add to be a negative value. So I'm only going to list here as possibilities negative numbers because their product is positive and they would add to be 
a negative number. And oh look, I, I got the value I was looking for, but you know, again, in, in the event that it didn't happen right away, the, own, the number that goes into 15 nets is not a two, it's a three. And that's the only other pairing of values whose product is a positive 15. But they do not add to be that negative 16. So I'm going to take the negative 1 and the negative 15, and I'm going to replace this with a negative 1y and a negative 15y. Again, doesn't that add to be a negative 16y? I write the 1. You don't have to write the 1. Um, but I'm kind of an advocate, advocate of putting that there just so I can see its coefficient. And then I'm going to bring down the 3, and then I'm going to bring down the 5y squared. And now I'm going to factor this by grouping. And remember, when there's a minus sign in front of the third term, you have to be very careful. You have to think of that minus 15 as a negative 15y. And so I'm going to group these two. And I'm going to get that negative sign inside my group, so I have a plus sign right there. And here, the greatest common factor is a y. So I'm going to factor out a y. And here the common factor is a 3. But whenever I have a negative sign in front of this third term, I have to be wary. If I only factor out, this is wrong, so I'm, I'm going to show you this. If I only factor out a positive 3, I would need a minus 5y here. Because a positive 3 times a minus 5y is that minus 15y. I'm looking for this to be a positive 5y. So I'm not going to factor out a 3, I'm going to factor out a negative 3. That allows me to put a positive 5y here, because that product is the minus 15y. And a negative 3 times a negative 1 right there will give me that positive 3. And oh look, these binomials match, and so I write those down once, and this y and that minus 3 go in the other binomial, and I can and should, if I would like, go ahead and FOIL that out to see if I get what I started with, and I do.